distributor and the battery tray was uh, I don't know you know the guy ain't gonna be able to see it too well here so hang on I had some of this laying around you know nothing special just some chunks of metal like that and I took it oh here's here's the other piece I took this stuff cut off a chunk ended up with this I bent this out flat like that this one here is too short and the other one there's another one already mounted in there but uh, bent it flat drilled a couple of holes to match there's a bracket in there right about There's a bracket underneath the battery tray right about here and I just drilled a couple of holes put a bolt on it after oh this is after I painted this uh, tray up put like I don't know a couple of cans worth of uh, rust-oleum on there basically to protect it keep it from rusting out but I put two bolts in that bracket going that way and then I put some of them 90 degree bracket things on the side here going into the fender so I mean you know it ain't going much anywhere and then underneath the uh, battery between the battery and the tray I've got just a chunk of rubber inner tube keeps them bolt heads from punching in the bottom of the battery so and just for now a bungee cord I got to get a battery bracket here later on this weekend tranny cooler I had to pop the grill off I popped the grill off I don't know if you can see the tranny cooler here it's, it runs from about here to about here I don't like that mounted kind of at a I say about a 30 degree up angle and I really don't know if you'll be able to see this or not but in my training lines I was able to splice into the old uh, the heat exchanger and the radiator no problem there uh, I can't think of what else a 55 mile an hour down the gravel road and it steers nice and straight doesn't wander all over the road so brand new front tires oh and underneath the doghouse, right about here, well, actually down here, there's a uh, heat shield. Punched a couple holes in it and cut another piece of sheet metal and kind of bent it over a little bit to make an extra heat shield. And did the same thing back here. So I heard a lot of people complaining about the passenger seat, you know, the heat just bleeding through this thing. Well, there's insulation on the inside of this doghouse, but I figure, hey, a little extra piece of sheet metal ain't going to hurt nothing. And I did the same thing back on the driver's side and back here or whatnot, just to kind of help that, you know, get the air to flow in the doghouse so it doesn't, you know, soak into the doghouse and make the cab all hot and everything. And one tip I got from a guy on the All Par forums is if you take a chunk of plastic and you mount it right up underneath the bumper, right, right there, you effectively get an air dam and that's supposed to create a low pressure area underneath down in here and basically you'll suck air through the engine compartment and keep it nice and cool or try to help it keep it nice and cool so and I just happen to have I just happen to have a chunk of plastic a few inches deep even though it's blue that I think I'm gonna bolt up there and call it an air dam after I get after I give it a coat of white paint with a lot of flex agent in it obviously because it's plastic so you know why not I got the stuff why not uh, what else radio works oh yeah I'm rocking yeah, so air conditioner on the roof, bugs. <clears throat> That's about it. That's all I got to say about that. You know, and I forgot the most important part here. <clears throat> if you watch this, ready? One. <laughs> Is that rough or what? Watch some of the light here. Oil pressure's up, charging. Gas gauge don't work though, that's all right. And all that noise is from that only muffler, so 
Friday it gets changed out. Yeah. Choke's a little bit slow to come off, but uh, that's all right. I can deal with that. Especially when it gets cold out. And look at that. No smoke coming out of the muffler. That's it.